everybody and welcome to, to the third installment in the Minecraft multiplayer plugin creation tutorial. This will show you of course how to make a plugin for Bucket for Minecraft multiplayer. Um, I left you off right about here where we just set up the basic uh, framework for our project. So right now what we gotta do is we gotta import the references to Bucket itself. Because otherwise if we don't have Bucket imported into this project it won't understand half the stuff we're typing because the functions won't exist. So what we gotta do is we gotta right click on hello world, go to properties, and if you watched episode 2 it showed us how to set up a local bucket server, so if you haven't, uh, click the link that'll appear just about now, and then come back to this one. Alright, so right click hello world, go to properties, and then um, go to java build path, and go to libraries. Click on add external jars, and then go to wherever you saved your server. And then double click on bucket.jar. Okay, so now that we've got bucket imported, just press OK. You'll notice that it'll appear right here. And now that we've got our bucket.jar, it will understand most of the references that we type. We'll have to import a few of them from the bucket.jar, but now we have the API for bucket. So right at the top here at plugin or public class hello world, right after hello world type extends Java plugin. If when you see a red squiggly appear, there's a 90% chance that you need to import it. So just click import Java plugin from bucket. And there you go, you'll see that appear at the very top. Let's see what the issue is here. Save. All right, so you'll notice that it says that uh, the type hello world must implement the inherited abstract method plugin on enables. So that means we gotta add the uh, part of the plugin where it says when it is enabled, it should do this. So we'll get to that later. Just ignore that little red squiggly. We'll continue on. First thing we're gonna do is give our plugin another name. So we're gonna say public static hello world plugin. Um, this makes it a little bit easier for us later on because instead of saying plugin every time or hello world every time we need to reference the plugin uh, we just say plugin. So when you're stating a variable which is something that uh, you might have to research some of this and if you watch some of the new Boston tutorials because I'm not great at explaining this stuff um, yeah it won't be as much of an issue. Uh, so a variable you're gonna state a variable and when you're stating a variable the type of the variable goes first and then the name of the variable goes last. So here we go. The type of the variable is hello world and um, we're gonna call the variable plugin. So it's just a quicker way of typing it out instead of typing hello world every time we just type plugin. So right under public static hello world plugin type public final logger logger equals logger dot get logger. Now it's a little bit redundant. Minecraft put Minecraft in parentheses and quotation marks and finish off this line with a semicolon. Alright, so again, we stated a new variable. The type is logger. The variable will be called logger. And uh, it is equal to logger.getlogger Minecraft. So that means instead of typing logger.getlogger Minecraft every time we need to use this, we will just say logger. It would make more sense if I was sounding a little bit less redundant, but later on you'll catch on to what we're doing. So, right-click logger as you'll notice, or hover over it, and you'll notice that it's got that right squiggly, and as you may have guessed, you need to import it. Okay, time to state another variable. We're going to say right under this line, the previous one, we're going to type public final server chat player listener, which I know is a heck of a long uh, function or type, so that's why we're making this variable, so it's a little bit shorter, we don't have to write all that out every time, so maybe you're catching on already, and we're going to call the variable player capital L listener, we're going to set that equal to new server chat player listener, this is going to return some errors since we haven't made the listener quite yet, but 
we will maybe in another installment or maybe even this one okay so we got now we have our another variable saying player listener will just mean new server chat player listener this when we make the listener that error will go away in Java you cannot export a plugin if it has errors so um, by the time we're done with this it won't have any errors because otherwise you'd be with a broken plugin so I'll make sure that everything is working squeaky clean right now we're gonna create the function for when the plugin is disabled so we're gonna say at override we're gonna type public void on disable and we're gonna type inside plugin description file so our type is a plugin description file we're gonna call that PDF file so it's a little bit shorter we don't have to type out plugin description file every time we're gonna say this dot get description as you may have guessed you hover over the squiggly line and you go to import plugin description file and you can see it's added up at the top so we don't have that line anymore because it now knows what we're talking about we're going to type this.logger. So now we are contacting the actual log of the server. You know, where you see uh, when somebody connects and disconnects, and sometimes you'll see that warning server can't keep up with time. For all that, the, the log of the server. We're now contacting that. We're going to tell it. <clears throat> so this.logger.info means um, to show a message into the log to insert a message into the log. Now see if we hadn't stated logger at the very beginning, the variable logger, we'd be typing logger.getloggerminecraft.info instead of just this little quick variable. So you're gonna type inside PDF file, which is the variable we just stated, get name plus is now disabled. So right now we just typed in, and put a semicolon at the end, right now we just typed in a string, okay? So right now we stated a variable, and then this little plus sign means we're going to actually add in some text other than another variable. So you put a plus sign in between this variable and the text, and then you're going to surround the text in quotation marks. So that's how you insert a variable into text. Okay. So... Again, if you've programmed in other languages, you're catching on. And if you've actually watched the New Boston tutorial, it's going to be very easy to catch on. So um, I really don't find it necessary to have to explain all this stuff to you, just because I'm not very good at it, as I stated earlier. So um, if you're getting confused, don't get frustrated with me. Just watch those tutorials, and you will not be lost. Right under on disable, we're going to add another public void, which will be type override again, public void on enable bracket press the enter key and it'll close it off for you I'm going to type plugin manager we're going to shorten that up with pm equals this is another variable get server dot get plugin manager okay right under that line we're going to actually real fast we're going to import plugin manager from bucket and uh, we're going to type pm dot register event so when this event occurs we will be running a certain we'll be contacting a certain class right now we're using the hello world class but as you see above server chat player listener is going to be another class that we will make which will uh, handle uh, events when a player types a message in the game. So pm.register event, I'm going to type event dot type dot player underscore chat. I'm going to press the tab key. I'm going to type this dot player listener, or you can just click on this. And then you're going to press tab event dot priority normal because it did this uh, this little event doesn't require a high priority or a low priority just a normal so we're just gonna say it's normal and then for argument three you're gonna type 
screwed up a little bit, so I'm just going to replace it manually. For argument three, you're just going to type this. And then we're going to finish that off with this semicolon. Okay, where you see, um, so you see that this is also have a, this also has a red line under it, and there's no solution to this error. Um, at the very top, you'll see server chat player listener, player listener. As I stated earlier, we haven't made the class for this yet, so that's why it's also returning an error here because we're basically just referring to this. Okay, so that's. Um, you add another line underneath here. We're almost done with this class. So this is going to be a relatively fast tutorial, and uh, but it'll have a good outcome. So right underneath this, we're going to also say plugin description. Just copy um, this right here. Copy that, and then place it in here again. All right. So now that we got our plugin description PDF file variable put back into the unenable because you're going to have to restate some variables. Um, there's a faster way of doing this, but um, it'll make more sense if I just do it this way. Underneath this, we're going to type this.logger.info. So as you may have recalled, we are telling it to insert a line into the server log. And we're going to say, my bad, I typed in three Gs. We don't need three Gs, we need two. So dot info. I'm gonna say PDF file dot get name. Right now we're getting the name of the plugin. Um, and then we're gonna say plus sign, which means we are now going to put some text into here. Uh, version, put another space, put another plus outside the quotation marks, and then say PDF file dot get version. Another plus sign text is enabled. Let me finish it off with a semicolon. So again, as you can see, we could just do this. Uh, hello world version 1.0 is enabled. We could just type that out every time. But using variables, it will automatically update it anytime we change the version number elsewhere or the name elsewhere. So this way, using variables makes it much less work. So that's why we do this. We're saying get the name of it, and then we're going to say version, and then we're going to get the version of it. Then we're going to say is enabled. Make sure there's a space before it is. A little bit fast paced at the moment, and I apologize. Believe it or not, we are now done with this class, and we're going to go make our player listener now. So right click right here, and go to new, and then class, we're going to call this um, server chat player listener, where's the return key, and then check out the fourth installment on the series to figure out how to set up the server chat player listener. Thanks for watching and subscribe for new videos.